urgent matter, so uh, beg your indulgence. But moving on, uh, call to order, uh, roll call, please. Here. 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 We can stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Uh, Lisa, proof of posting. The agenda was posted in the upper and lower levels of the Amundsen Community Center of Edgar Bank. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, moving on, public comment. Is there anybody that would like to speak about anything at this time? Okay, uh, I see one person, two. Kathy, why don't you come up first, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, there's just two people here. Um, can we allow uh, three minutes? I don't need that much. Okay, all right, uh, you're gonna take time on this one? Good evening. Most of you know me. I'm Kathy Yergis. I own Cambridge Market. Um, as of April 1st, I am also the executive director of a newly formed nonprofit in town. Um, the nonprofit is the Collaborative 523 Incorporated. We, I received a um, grant from a private foundation to help support some of the work that um, I've been doing along with the Cambridge Area Business Group um, to keep some of the festivals and events running in town. So our mission statement is to energize the Cambridge area by restoring the vitality of the Central Business District, enhancing our community identity through focused efforts in promotion, economic development, and execution. Our vision is to advocate, design, and pursue community development in Cambridge through connecting businesses, organizations, individuals, events, and resources. So it's much of um, the work that CAB, the Cambridge area businesses, have already been doing. It'll reach into a few other efforts. Um, my goal is to support other local businesses to um, get done what they wanna get done for their next vision for their businesses. Um, as such, the first event that we are bringing to town is Make Music Day Cambridge. Make Music Day is an international festival um, founded in France more than 40 years ago. It was brought to the States about 16 years ago. Madison is the number one location for Make Music Day. Um, Cambridge is now an official um, city under the Make Music Day event. It's always on June 21st, summer solstice, and um, I am in the process of signing up host locations and musicians for that, but it'll be a day of music celebration throughout Cambridge um, with free events and events for people to participate in and should draw a nice crowd from the, uh, we'll be focusing on the Jefferson and Rock County areas because they do not have a location for Make Music Day. Collaborative 523 Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, uh, Joe, you had raised your hand secondly. Hello, Joe Evans, Cambridge Fire Chief. Um, just want to make sure everybody got the proposal. We got a, a new one from Fire Services. Um, just want to, if you guys had any questions about this estimate. Did you guys receive it this? Forwarded, yes. Mm -hmm. So this one came in at um, $54,709.45. This does not include new frame rails. This is basically knocking the rust off and painting it and replacing rusty parts. Does this change the recommendation? No, no it does not. And this in $5,600 would have to be, if this decide to go that direction, $5,600 would be put in for tires, which oh. comes up, yeah, what did I say? $5,600, so it would come into around $60,000 would have to be invested in that truck that's up for replacements, like I mentioned at the last meeting in two years, so. That's all, anybody have any questions about the, about this estimate? All right, and just one last thing, May 27th is obviously our breakfast at the station starting at I think six o'clock. So come and have some breakfast. Thank you. Okay, uh, Charles. Up. 
I'm Charles Fiesel. I own the Plow Restaurant and uh, Ward's Mercantile. Just wanted to give a heads up. I didn't make it on the agenda tonight, but um, we will be on the next agenda. I uh, wanted to give a heads up. We applied for what's an RFSI, uh, Resilient Food Infrastructure Grant, with the Department of Ag. Um, it's probably about a three to six month kind of process to see if it happens. Um, it goes along with what I've been proposing for the, the thing. We had a little technical difficulties last night with uh, anything with electricity. So I printed this out and just wanted to get it in y'all's hands. Um, there's a good chance I'll be in California during that next meeting and have to have someone else um, represent and pre present on that. So I want to get you a hard copy to look at. Any questions, any concerns that I could answer before then and prepare the people that will be presenting would be awesome. Um, some of you are obviously probably not familiar with what we've been working on the last eight years. So I wanted to make sure it, it, that I'm giving you guys a hard copy and um, I'm always free to talk. So if I could leave these with you guys that maybe yeah. don't have them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak? Okay. I'm going to close this portion of the uh, public comment. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Care, make I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All right. We've got an approval and we've got a second. Any discussion necessary? Uh, hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it carries. Um, <coughs> going to uh, move into reports. Um, let's just hold mine off. Uh, the time. Why? 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 I can hold on. It's, it's what's next in the agenda, Mike. Yeah, I know. You want to make I, a motion to move it? I, I have nothing that I, you want to have a motion to, to move it? Fine. You, but I do not, I'm not going to go into it this evening. Okay, report. then you have nothing, nothing to report. report. Okay, okay. Nothing I thought you was, we were holding off till later. That's what hold off meant to me. Sorry. Nothing to um, report. I apologize. Okay, library board. Uh, we met and went through five, four different uh, board policies, uh, which we will be discussing in tomorrow night's meeting. Um, for, we did approve them. Uh, they are, should be posted on the library site. And we have another one uh, to post uh, that we will be finalizing tomorrow. So we are getting the library all set up with all of their policies, which you can find on the Cambridge Library website. And again, remember that the library is now open uh, Monday through Thursday until 7 p.m. Visit your local library. Check out books. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Plan Commission. Sure. We met last night. Um, one of the items was Mike Rump's um, CSM, which is on our agenda for later. And then the, the majority of it was Charles Faisal, who we just saw, gave a presentation of what he is planning on doing with his property. He um, requested uh, potentially purchasing a sliver of land back from the village, which will likely make it to our next agenda for meeting, uh, for discussion. And then uh, we went into uh, just a very brief discussion about um, different ordinances and how things should be worded for zoning. Um, we didn't go into too much detail because we had well, quite a few people missing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Questions? All right, thank you. Uh, moving on, Bill, economic development. Yeah, we met last night as well. Kind of a mostly informative session. We had several speakers. Uh, Charles was there as well, mm -hmm. for a brief, I think Harry could be a little briefer with us, but that was interesting. We also had, uh, Kathy came to ours as well and explained her thing. And we also had uh, Deborah Reinbolt, if I said that right, from uh, JCE to BC, the Jefferson County Economic Development Commission, who we are a member of that, and uh, presented what that's about and um, how our involvement would work with that. And then we spent some time talking about goals and direction and landed on mostly trying to uh, figure out what we're going to do and we're still debating that but we did agree I think with the committee to try to support Kathy and her endeavors as much as we can uh, you know, her grant is only for one year guaranteed so if we can help her get some wins maybe she can get another grant or we can find some other funding for her possibly to keep that going so a good meeting okay. any questions 
Moving on, uh, Mr. Todd Lord, our Director of Public Works. Todd, Director of Public Works for Cambridge, Wisconsin. <laughs> um, we've uh, been planting trees in the terraces and in the parks, and we're about halfway done with that right now. Um, we uh, got a new flag, and it's actually a heavy-duty flag. It's a vertical stitch. They did a vertical stitch on it with heavy-duty corners. I wish they would have said that to me when they gave us the flag in the first place. And that's the because one then we probably Park. would, we probably would still have the, be flying that flag. Um, they reinforced corners and, and vertical stitched it. Uh, working working on the park benches right now. Uh, or the main street benches right now. We got the park, the park. Uh, Pick tables. <laughs> brain. <laughs> table, tables. Picnic tables. Come on. Park picnic tables. I even have it wrote down here. Park picnic tables uh, done. And uh, the A RIP grant will not work because no farmer is willing to to sign any of the paperwork and give any of that personal information even though it won't be held against them. But that's, then we've moved on from that. And um, that's about it. We, we, we talked about putting a sign up one time for the restroom in the park down there next to the bike. Mm -hmm. we, were you, was your staff doing that or who was going to do that? I think we got a sign up there, didn't we? Is there we? on the road or street or something to point in that direction? It's down by the trailhead, right? We put one up to show where the uh, bathrooms we did. are. So you did yes. put one up. Yeah, that was that was a while ago. All right, that's why I'm like, did we do that? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that. At our yeah, meeting that was a while back. Yeah, it okay. was a while back. All right. But yeah, that's done. That was done a long time ago. Great. So, and it's okay. Everything is waiting. Waiting for that new plow truck. We're hoping. We're hoping that Partyville wants to be interested in buying the other one. So, is your cold patching going okay this year? I saw you had a couple stock you started on. On uh, coming in town Street, yeah. Uh, no, that's actually Dane County. Oh, it's Dane County. Okay. We, we can't we can't touch the U.S. Highway like oh, that. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's that's all that's all the Dane County stuff. Okay. But uh, we have been patching, but right now our, our main focus is trees. So How many we're trees making are sure we get all those trees down. <laughs> How many trees are you planting? Uh, we're just it's 27, but oh. they're they're actually bigger trees than what we've been planting, so it takes a little bit more to okay. plant these trees. Okay. Bigger holes. Mother Nature didn't help so it's either. good we're getting some rain then. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Anything else? Thank you for. Oh, and the other thing, uh, Jay and I will be going to the Zeolite Iron and VOCs, and that will that will end every class that I need for for uh, here. Okay. Good for you, Todd. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, village office update, Lisa. Um, kind of a repeat. Um, election um, went very well. We had roughly a 50% turnout. Um, so with the weather and stuff that day, um, went well. Um, finishing up on some audit stuff there finishing up on their work so they still have some questions that we're getting we're going to have a call with them on Thursday so continuing to finish up on that been working a lot on the fire and EMS stuff some the ongoing projects we have a couple that will be coming flank mission next week somebody um, came in talking about some smaller like eight units um, housing um, a new liquor license um, for the um, Rob Warren is selling sold his building um, so um, a brew tasting room so that will be coming before us um, following up on the trees I didn't have a chance that I just received we did receive our tree city I believe it's our 16th or 18th, 18th year 18th so year. we'll have the correspondence in the next um, packet um, just a, a lot of big projects ongoing um, a couple of which will be on the agenda um, okay. Any questions?
questions for Lisa? All right, thank you. Let's move on. Uh, Tammy, uh, we've got uh, bills and your report. So. Um, on the sheet that we had, there was a bill that we paid ahead of time. We had a, a equipment loan we needed to pay to Badger Bank, so that was sent out before the bill run. Um, a couple of bills on there, over 5,000. One of the big ones was to Mid-City Corporation for loan number three. The first run was $305,215.12. The second run, $10,025.77. For a total of three hundred fifteen thousand two hundred forty dollars and eighty nine cents. Motion. I'll make a motion. Pay the bills in the amount of three hundred fifteen thousand two hundred forty dollars and eighty nine cents. I'll second. All right. Second. Second. Kristen. Uh, any questions? Any, um, any concerns? Uh, I had a couple in here. Um, Todd just talked about it. The corner patches. That this is on a new flag. It's a six hundred and eighty-three dollar bill uh, or, or check. And, and I thought our old flag was worn beat. Did we get a new one? It started after so many. They can only they can only fix it for three feet. After that three feet, they you have to replace it. All right. And what happened was is it, it ripped out. It ripped out on. The, So we opted to go for one that was a little bit more reinforced and reinforced in the corner so it can last a little bit longer this time. And that okay. first one was one that came free when we got the new flight pole. The pole right. So, yeah. no. Um, my other question, it, we had a village employee, and I, I'm not sure what this is. It's a WRWA lacrosse conference meeting. The um, Cody and Derek were up at um, lacrosse for the Wisconsin Rural Water Association okay. conference. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're for our credits. Yeah. Okay. Have 18 credits every three of years. Learning credits. All right. so. Okay. That's fine. I just saw lacrosse and I'm like, what yeah. is that about? And then uh, Mid City Corporation, a check there for two hundred eighty-five thousand. The okay. well project. Yep. That's that's fine. We don't have any. MSA had signed off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Uh, roll call, please. Helen Beck. Uh, yes. Chris. Yes. Blackwood. Yes. Reinick. Yes. Franklin. Whitworth. Yes. McNeely. Yes. All right. Thank you. Moving into new business, uh, portable restrooms in Veterans Park. So I just handed out to you, um, Lori Strauss had contacted me. They get the restrooms in the com in the park for the concerts, but looking at the oh. events, um, it's pretty much every week. So There's an event <laughs> from May 27th yeah. through June 28th without a break. There's one every, um, there's a, the Lions has, has Memorial Weekend, then there's a concert. Then there's Fire Fest, then there's a concert, then there's Make Music, then there's a concert. Uh, and that takes us to the end of June. I talked to my portable people, LRS, is that right? Yeah. And um, just for the concerts, for the five concerts, it's um, 1425 and I have a $300 credit, so that's already taken off that. So it's closer to $2,000. For If we rent it monthly, it will save us $2,000. If we rented it, if we could get permission to leave portables in the park at, at Veterans Park, um, it would be a handicap one and a standard one. They would be cleaned out weekly. Um, it would it would cost only three hundred and eighty five a month. Oh my gosh! And and so now the lines don't have to get portables. They don't have to get them for make music. Um, it takes some of the the pressure off the restaurants because there's not a lot of public restrooms. The ones here, but they're never available to the public unless it's during business hours. And that's not generally when people need the bathrooms. Um, and and ideally, we would keep it in place until the 
Maxwell Street Days, which is now being rebranded as Art on Main, Art on Main. And so if we could do, so it doesn't cost the village anything, it's just I need permission to leave them in place for, for the summer. I think they'll be used a lot. You know, when people walk the circuit for Firefest, for example, if they have to pee at the other end of the building, at the other end of the street, they're in trouble. <laughs> and then they're knocking on Bev's door or they're knocking on Avid Gardner's door. Most people don't have bathrooms for the public. Um, so that's why I asked. It would save both the Lions, um, Kathy's new um, uh, collaborative, and Arts Council coll collectively $2,000. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve allowing the Cambridge Arts Council to place two porta potties in Veterans Park for uh, five weeks. It would be from May 27th through August 3rd. From May 27th through August 3rd. I'll second. You guys are awesome. Thank well, you. We haven't well, approved we have it. Have <laughs> 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 now we're going for it. Same sock. Same sock. Yeah, so it wouldn't be killing any grass. It would be just off. It's There's yellow lines painted there, right? Mm -hmm. OK. So you're putting them up by uh, Highway 12 then? Right. Same place they've been for the last two years in concerts. Right. right now we bring them in, they take them out. We bring them in, they take them out. Um, okay. It's during the summer. They get cleaned out once a week. Um, mm -hmm. They probably put some deodorant cakes in there or something like it, that. Yeah, there's there's plenty of non-poop smelling stuff in there. there. All right, just want to make sure. <laughs> All right, anything else? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Now I can say yeah. thank you guys are <laughs> awesome. And thanks you all for doing what you do. I appreciate it. So all Lisa, right. through the Cambridge Foundation, you know, you were looking for projects for that. I know permanent bathrooms are really expensive, but that's something we could put on that list is possibly putting a permanent full year round bathroom on that location. Wow, that's an ask. That's mm -hmm. a good idea, Beth. I like it. <laughs> so you can add it to your list, Water maybe. Fill station. Yeah, think outside the box once in a while. There we are. All righty. Uh, let's move on then to item B. Uh, uh, Mike Rumps. Uh, serve, uh, oh. Certified survey. Can I do it? Sure. sure. Are you? Uh, um, Mike Rumpf came in uh, last night at the Planning Commission meeting. Um, he presented a CSM to us, um, basically just to record the documents uh, as a CSM. He wants to correct the address as identified on the documents. It had 200 West North Street. It's actually 201. And really, he's just intending to show where the lot lines are. Um, he wasn't asking to change anything. No, just the, the one change um, where it has the 4591, those parcels are currently with lot two and three with the alley in between. So he is moving those that little area and attaching it to lot one rather than with the lots across the street. So oh, um, got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was recommended uni unanimously by the Planning Commission to approve. Right. You want to make a Motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the CSM uh, from Mike Rump for 201 West North Street. I'll second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. All right. Update on Kashkanon Creek. I will take this one. You'll recall that uh, the last time we had a meeting of this on the agenda, the board directed me to contact David Hughes, who is the chair of the um, drainage district who does all the work to just ask if they're willing to what role the drainage board would be willing to play um, to, to help us remove the trees and uh, we were talking about it in the context of an after the fact permit that might be required because the, they perform the work in the floodplain district the floodplain boundaries of, of our jurisdiction 
And when I talked to David Hughes, he pushed back on the idea that the drainage district would ever be subject to floodplain um, zoning. So I looked at the statute myself, and I, my read is that um, in Chapter 87, they are subject to our floodplain zoning as long as they're not, their, their exception only exists in an agricultural area. So as long as they're on a parcel with a structured use, we would have the authority to require an after the fact permit of them. And that means that as part of that, we could ask for their help in removing the trees. So what I don't have a great handle on is sort of documentation about where these these are. You know, we, when we were fighting with the DNR about whether we needed the wetlands and waterway map, uh, permits, we had maps of you know the district boundaries. We don't have any great maps that are on a, a smaller scale in order to to require this after the fact permit. And so, I mean, we can put the burden on we can put the burden on the drainage district to to come up with that. Um, and so, but I wanted to take your direction on that. It might be a little bit of a, a little bit of a fight. I think the, the statutory reading here is pretty, pretty clear cut. Um, and it could be just that they need to be told <laughs> that this is how the statute parses, parses that out. Um, and it happened because of my history, happened to be one of like two attorneys in the state who love drainage district uh, <laughs> law. <laughs> Uh, so um, I think I think that's where we're at. We we can demand more of them or ask for more. We can require an after the fact permit of them, and as part of that, we could ask for their help in hauling these things off. I just I wanted to take your feedback on if, if that's what we want to do. I because I know that we were balancing the fact that we we do want to work collaboratively with them going forward, but um, this is private and public land and yeah. yeah yeah I mean I think anywhere where we have floodplain authority we have the uh, authority to require this whether it's public or private land anywhere our zone zoning ordinance our floodplain zoning ordinance is, is on but it's it is still a policy direction for you to you know to flex those muscles so what do you need from us if we want you to continue on that's what I would want to, to know if you want me to continue on and say, yes, we are going to require an after the fact permit. And if so, here's what we want you to do. We want, we want you guys to be the, the heavy lifting, the literal heavy lifting of the trees <laughs> uh, to get them out of there and find a, a disposal location for them. Okay. And I, I'm just assuming that would be everywhere where we have the you know, unless you wanted to parse that out more in a more granular way, I would just assume that would be everywhere where the trees are down, where we have floodplain zoning authority. So that would basically be within the city limits of Kings and like yeah. village limits. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Unless there were somehow an agricultural use within the village limits, of course, probably not. Um, that stretch. Do we have a motion? Motion for Jane to continue the discussion. I'll second that. Is that clear Further enough? discussion. Yeah, I mean, I uh, we'll, we may have to, you know, I, I can I can start with a phone call and just let him know that mm -hmm. this is going to come. That um, I think that'll be. That I think that's the right procedure, probably, or at least the one I would recommend. The the they are a, an entity that votes and probably will have to vote on how they're going to deal with us <laughs> and, um, and, and treat this scenario. I don't think they've ever been asked to follow this before. And I, I think it doesn't come up very often for drainage districts. So for the map issue you talked the map too big we have? Could you just take a photo of it and then print it whatever size you need? Well, here's what we don't have is to know, OK, our floodplain, here, here are where the trees are. I, we don't have a map of where the trees are or where that coincides with our floodplain ordinance. So it, it, that's a little bit tricky. We're trying to enforce something where we just kind of like, kind of know where it is, but we don't have a, I don't think there was ever a formal project developed with plans and specs about where those trees were going to be located. So it's a little bit, it, it's just a little bit different of an enforcement situation than a normal one where you'd have some sort of documentation. 
Do you know? So Can you see it? Our so it's the moment of heat from the from the uh, from the body. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah, right? Like Just everywhere in the feet, creek. Twenty feet from the water. I, so is this from like the Highway bridge? Highway twelve to eighteen. From the bridge here all the way to Highway twelve and eighteen. Not the other. Or yeah. Highway eighteen. I'm sorry. Yeah. All the way to Highway to 18. eighteen. Yeah. Not Main including Street to Jefferson oh, Street. Main Street. Yeah. Not including that portion that they did a couple years back. No. It's no. it's not it's not on the north side no. of Highway 18. No. Just that section no. in there. It's not even in there. Okay. It's all it is is from it's where Park Road ends. Yep. If you if you look over, it starts there. Yep. And then it comes. And then to comes the to the bridge. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't. Oh. It doesn't. It doesn't go all the way over to the ending. Oh. Okay. So yeah. And there's people who live all throughout there. That so. But it sure would be nice if they got removed from the bank banks now. Well, they're not. They, they have nothing on the, the regular side. No. Oh, okay. It's all on the other side. It's all on the other side. But it really looks bad over here by the bridge. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so if we had to compromise with them, I'd want to at least get the bridge part removed. Okay. <laughs> I'll make note of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that? that was that yeah, yeah really that's the spot that really needs because it. Yeah. It's, it's unseemly. <laughs> okay, anything else? All right, all those in favor of uh, having Jane move ahead with this and helping us, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, Jane, keep up the good work. Uh, COVID policy and the recommendation from the personnel committee. The recommendation from personnel is that we were going to go with the CDC policy, which states that it's looked at now as um, a flu or any other um, mm -hmm. and people can use their paid time off or their sick time for COVID so yeah are you still recommending the five like five day the CDC health? has now said Three. if you no longer have a fever and if your symptoms are improving they don't have so we've always followed where it was the ten days it was mm -hmm. the five, five days we were paying people when they were off because during COVID we couldn't afford for our whole staff to be depleted <laughs> with the mm -hmm. elections going on and um, public works. We couldn't have, you know, so we paid, um, they, people didn't have to use their FTO. Um, see, um, the new guidelines do, you know, say treat it like the flu. So I just wanted verification that, yep, we're now using PTO. We're no longer covering if people are out with COVID. Okay. Um, you want to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion that we, uh, the village staff, uh, utilizes the CDC's COVID policy uh, with our village staff using um, sick time. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. I guess I'd clarify any PTO. If people or are any new, PTO. they may not have sick time. Yeah, paid PTO. You're all right with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, all those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, carries. Uh, moving on, unfinished business, fire commission update. Uh, we had a special meeting on uh, March 28th, 2024 out in Oakland, uh, it was around 6 p.m. So uh, I was called by myself and Sheila to try to get uh, some actionable items taken care of. Uh, unfortunately, uh, of the agenda items, um, there was quite a few things removed from the agenda. And uh, the commission president appointed a lawyer to kind of take, take on the meeting. So, um, um, and then the other discussions we're going to have on that are going to be in closed session. So I, we did pay about thirteen thousand dollars in bills. So, and um, we did not review anything on budget-wise. So to 
going to 10B, payment of second quarter dues. I mean, we we were gonna po we were gonna postpone that until we had this meeting to see if we had any actionable items from it, but uh, we did not. So. So we still don't have a working budget. No. So, I wish I had more to report. Uh, I left the meeting very frustrated because um, I felt like it was three hours. It was kind of a waste of my time. Um, but we'll keep emotion out of it, right? So, could you clarify that uh, the commission president appointed a lawyer? What was anyone else from there? Yeah, he also brought in uh, Mr. Smith back as his as his appointed. Person. Where does the president have the authority to appoint who uh, runs a meeting in his absence? He doesn't. Right. It, the, if he's not there, then the board should have voted who runs the meeting. Pro yeah, tem. usually it's a pro tem situation where we would vote on it. And so my question is, is this lawyer working for Mark Cook or is this lawyer working for the EMS commission? As it stands right now, he stated that he's working for the president. Then is the president paying him? Because I don't want any of my taxpayer payer dollars. If he's working for Mark Cook, I don't want my taxpayer dollars to be paying his bills. Mm -hmm. Which okay. are over $9,000 so far. Is that considered a legal meeting? It's a legal meeting because it was posted. posted. It was and you posted. had a quorum. And we okay. had a quorum, but. So the legality of it, it was legal, but again. Did he, did he, sorry, Chris. Yeah. Did he actually state that he's he's working for Mark Cook? He's, wor he's He didn't say m the name, Mark Cook. He said the president. He's working for but, the president until the, until the commission decides otherwise. But, but. And we had a motion on there to replace the president, but uh, that was removed by vote. But he. But he doesn't work for one person. He works for the whole commission. Do, do we have as, any recourse on that, James? As you know from a lawyer legal standpoint, the argument is it's a lot easier to get your information funneled in from one person vice the whole board. That's, that's what the legal. I mean, that's information. That's not, he shouldn't be taking sides. To clarify, the lawyer did not vote? No. Mm -hmm. Did Mr. Smithak vote? Yes. So they had two representatives, mm -hmm. essentially? Well, I watched the video of that meeting. Yeah. yeah. And my recollection was he said he worked for the board, Mark Cook. I never heard him say Mark Cook, but I may have misheard that. Yeah. But my recollection was he said he, he was employed by the board. I, I think, think it's a. I think someone asked him who pays the salary. And he said the commission. The commission pays it, yeah. So uh, if the commission is paying the salary, he's employed. Works for the board. But it didn't sound to me like he was representing the board, though, in that meeting. That's where my question was. I thought his wording was, I work for my client. And the board is his client. <laughs> do we have clarification that he is right. actually the, you know, that's my question. Is do we have clarification that he's actually the commission attorney? Or... He is the commission. I mean, we have an attorney who makes it very clear to us every time. She gives us recommendations and then says, but I don't set policy. Yeah. You set policy. Right. You guys have to decide among yourselves what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. This is our complaint with the last lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to think about the recourse to undo the actions that were done at the time. I guess, right. it, you know, in the meeting, the votes that were made in the meeting, mm -hmm. I guess it's a different question to think about going forward, mm -hmm. how, to, how to establish the role of an attorney at the meeting. Awesome. To me, it's, it, you know, it seemed very choreographed. It was, okay. it was all kind of pre-planned, you agree. know. Uh, I went into the meeting thinking, well, there's probably a 
60%, 70% chance that Mr. Cook isn't going to be here. So we'll probably have to vote on a pro tem mm -hmm. that can run the meeting. And then it was, oh, no, the lawyer's going to take the, the meeting and do basically what the previous lawyer did. Mm -hmm. um, and that was not voted on by the commission. That was, that was uh, an order from Mr. Cook. Couldn't make that order. You can't make, he doesn't have the authority to do that. So. Topic at hand, second quarter dues. Still my recommendation that we hold off on paying dues. I don't want to pay them. I agree. Agreed. I I'll make a motion to hold off paying second quarter dues until we have the budget. budget budget I don't know how we want to word it yeah, I think we need to define what that means what that means I mean does it mean all five municipalities have to vote on it again Wait, I'll second yeah, okay. by the way now we can oh, have now we sorry. Can oh, sorry okay thank you I mean I think we need to define that because yeah I mean, we say just a budget they could just give us a piece of paper and here's your budget is that what you want if it's five municipalities yeah. then and that's going to take a month recommendation an approved budget mm -hmm. an approved budget they that's do not have an approved budget the ramifications so, of this is that that's going to take months. Why would that take months? If they give us a budget. They, they haven't even started looking at we developing meet, one. We meet in two weeks. Okay, when did the other municipalities they, meet? They, uh, We've I, asked for this since January. Well, I'm not arguing well, that well, way. I know. Um, and I'm not trying to be argumentative either. But I mean, we talked about arbitration. We talked about holding off mm -hmm. until you know that happened. And we've written multiple letters we've that written get ignored. Letters. I, mean, I just think what's going to happen is it's going to go three months. The commission's going to run out of money. EMTs aren't going to get paid. Then what? We had this on as an agenda item, and that was one of the agenda items that Mr. Smithback wanted removed. Review of 2023 budget versus actual. We wanted it removed. It got voted on, and and uh, it was decided that we would discuss it, but it didn't. It was not approved. One reason I'm struggling with our recourse is that the recourse that we have under the IDA would be, you know, we write a letter <laughs> and then we ask for mediation, you, you know, it, it, um, to resolve the issues. Those are the things that, that make sense in a normal circumstance to do. I mean, the, the other thing that occurs to me is to make sure that at least I can share my legal opinion that we can't remove agenda items that are public notice without Mm -hmm. The attorney shouldn't advise a commission member that he shouldn't talk about agenda items that Properly were publicly posted noticed. Agenda items. Right, and so, uh, you shouldn't talk about the merits. And I, that, my understanding is that that happened at that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we can equip our commission representatives to to push back when that happens. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's it's hard to know what to do except for to. I mean. Well, it's hard to make suit. that uh, pushback when I don't have a, a Jane in my pocket, you know, yeah. when I'm at the commission right. meeting. You know, it's, it's uh, the lawyers versus, you know. But there was a vote, and the committee voted to take it off the agenda. But uh, so Chris wanted can't? to talk about the substance before the vote happened. He right. wanted to raise a, an issue, is my understanding, mm -hmm. about why it was important to leave it on the agenda. And I think mm -hmm. the attorney said, no, we can't talk about the that we can't talk about why you'd leave it on because that gets into the substance of the agenda item. Mm -hmm. We have to first take a vote. So the procedural maneuver there swallowed up the substance that was properly noticed on the agenda item, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I've just yeah. never heard of okay. doing that before, and I don't think it was yeah. appropriate. That makes sense. Can we push? We've given leeway on the mediation and stuff because they had new attorneys. Yeah. Can we push forward and say, okay, no more leeway? We can do that, and we could know. add if we wanted to the the issue of who is your client. I think the attorney ethic rules are very clear. Uh, who is who is one's client in the situation? And that, to whom do your loyalties? Do you owe loyalties? Mm -hmm. And it's the commission as a whole, as opposed to one member of the commission so if we wanted to add that to our uh, to our mediation list and to push that that's one option I'd love to add that to the mediation list because yeah. I've got a serious question I mean that was 
that was part of our concerns with the previous lawyer, is that who, who quit abruptly, mm -hmm. gave like a no day notice that he was no longer serving the commission, mm -hmm. which seems very odd to me that any sort of legal person entity would do, it makes it very suspect to me on why he quit so abruptly. Mm -hmm. So I would want to make sure that the new attorney that we have mm -hmm. isn't just a carbon copy of the old one that the EMS commission got rid of, fire and EMS commission got rid of. Understands who his true client really yes. is. His mm -hmm. true client really, in a sense, is all five municipalities. All five municipalities. Well, here's where we're at. We've got a motion and we've got a second mm -hmm. to postpone this payment of the second quarter dues. And, and I will tell you, my, my concern is that you've got wages and you mm -hmm. also have a payment for a, a vehicle for the fire department. And I don't know how much is, is there. And I don't want to see the credit rating for the village of uh, the volunteer Cambridge area fire and EMS shot to smithereens because we aren't giving them the money to make the payment. But we're very happy to give them, we will give them our payment if they give us a budget. Mm -hmm. Even a proposed budget. We don't yeah. even have a proposed budget. I mean, right, because it was, oh, well, well, actually, they did put Oh, that's they right, did they did. They did give us something. Yes. But you know what? As it, soon as that was not approved by all right. communities, they were supposed to, by the IGA, mm -hmm. create a new one. Create a new budget. That we have so I need to, we need to see the new budget. I need to know, understand why they have 500 hours of overtime every month and where that money is coming from. I, I just don't understand it. And if we don't stand up now, then how is anybody going to ever believe anything we ever say? Right. I mean, Mark, I was the one at the, the January meeting that argued to, to pay that first quarter because I wanted them to have to get paid. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they do deserve to get paid for their job. But at what point do we have to hold our other municipalities accountable to them as well? So if they're upset and not getting paid, they need to talk to the municipalities that are not participating in doing their job. I'm sorry, Eric, were you going to say something? No, I was just thinking, uh, per the IGA, um, yeah, we have 60 days to pay it, which mm -hmm. I think we've passed, no? No. no. Not quite? No. no. And then interest starts uh, accruing, if I recall? Well, so are we, we shooting ourselves in the foot? We right? got the bill early. Yeah. At the mm -hmm. end of. I mean, I'm fine with not paying it now, but I think we've got to keep tabs on with Sheila and how much money they have mm -hmm. and make a hard decision right before they run out of money. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't think we want an EMS guy not doing making a call because he didn't get paid and yeah. something major happens and next thing becomes, well, it's because Cambridge didn't pay their bill. That's how it'll be spun. I think in no matter what we do, we're going to be vilified because either we pay it with no oversight whatsoever or we don't pay it. Yeah. Do we know if the town of Oakland has paid theirs? No. no. They have not? Well, I think we just wait two to more weeks. I say, do we, do we mend it weeks? to say, wait? I mean, if the si well, we, we'll meet in two weeks. Right. Yeah, so we that's can, what I mean. I mean it, it, and if the 60 days hasn't expired, mm -hmm. we are under no obligation to pay it early. So I want to know when that 60 days, if you could look into the yeah. 60 day notice. Um, that would be helpful for our next conversation. Has there been another fire commission meeting this week? I want to say the 23rd of this month. Which is the is night of proposed, our meeting. But I have not seen any that's agenda. That's the day of our meeting. Our meeting. 
weekend. It was it was thrown out there. I haven't seen any agenda or anything else, but that was what was proposed at the end of the meeting. It's the twenty third. You can't go, so it has to be a different date, right? You can't have it on the same day as what our and our village board Those meetings are, are posted. Mm -hmm. They know when we have village board meetings. Mm -hmm. Whoever suggested the twenty third. Um, anything further on this one? So what's the current motion right now? Yep, we just have to vote. To postpone it. Postpone mm -hmm. for the yeah. next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So you got nothing else? You got anything else, Chris? Not for this session. Okay. Um, we got a, a motion and a second to postpone it. Uh, all those in favor of postponing the payment of our second quarter dues, please uh, signify by saying yes. 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 And those that are in uh, opposition, uh, I am. I think we should pay it because I'm worried at the long term fire department when they need a vehicle and we have to finance it and we, our credit rating is if they don't have the money. I hope I'm wrong on this one, Joe. Please, um, please don't use our opinion. Yeah. Why would they call the emergency back to you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep, I agree. So that's where we're at. I'll, I'm, I'm voting against it. I think we should pay it. But, but it's not even due yet, Mark. So right. from just from that standpoint, why would we pay a bill early? Well, we had, wouldn't we, we had, have the interest? <laughs> well, we had talked about that, and we never – it moved to the beginning of the quarter. Yeah. No. I thought somewhere in there yeah. there was a – We used to pay – Yearly. Yearly, and yeah. we opted to do it quarterly Audit finance instead. Has to be and quarterly. Yeah, mm -hmm. to save the money okay. here. But nowhere does it say we have to do it at a certain time. All right. Well – we're going to hold off for two weeks. So. And just so I'm clear, any any action, any direction for me on this issue of the attorney? I feel like, like we have to do something. I because think we have to do something. Because we about keep it. spinning our wheels. Yeah. Do you have a suggestion? Well, <laughs> I mean adding it to our uh, adding it to our pending mediation and adding it that it be Has the new attorney seen that list? Yes. Yes, he called me when he was first hired and okay. and acknowledged that he was looking at it. Well, I think it's he's had plenty of time to get acclimated to his new client, so now's I think now's the time to. Do we have a yeah, time frame that I mean? Do we have an end date that we can give that we have to do this by such and such a date or? Well, the mediation you're talking about. The mediation about? is past that past already. That? It, it was sixty days. Okay, so. They're past the mediation. I mean, at, yeah. I, I guess, Jane, I'd like to see you. Do we need a motion or can we just direct you? You can just direct okay. me to, uh, yeah. And I don't know about the rest of the board, but I would like to see Jane reach out, letter probably, mm -hmm. whatever is the appropriate method, to address when are we going to get mediation and then to add our concern about the position of that lawyer and and who that lawyer is representing and making sure that it's the full commission which is the municipalities mm -hmm. and not an individual from one municipality and, uh, and also how uh, we want to pay our yeah. our dues we want to pay it but we we have an ask and that ask is you know we need to see a, a, an approved budget and, yeah. that's laid and out in the IGA so it's right. really not <laughs> asking right. much it's right. Not out. And you've been giving us reports, so I don't think we have a question on the fire side of items. Mm -hmm. It's I, I I have questions on EMS, EMS side, side and yeah. the administrative overhead that the EMS com commission is is spending right now. All right, so Jane, you know what you need to do or you've got a, mm -hmm. a clear well add this 
um, the second issue too about the budget to the letter mm -hmm. for the mediation is that the direction yeah so we mm -hmm. go to mediation right we do the next step and mm -hmm. say we win mediation then what happens well then I mean whatever and the mediator decides uh, yeah, is the, is I'm the assuming way to we win it. the mediation the, the mediator agrees with us yeah but well, then, I mean, that's what you have to do before you can file any sort of action in circuit court. Like, me mediation is sort of just how we have agreed that we're going to resolve any conflicts that we have so according to the IDA. So, so what if we they would ignore that is what I'm saying. Right. I mean, we could just go directly to circuit court and file, you know, a, a mandamus action to say you, you don't have a discretionary mm -hmm. duty on. I mean, if that's, that is always an option, too. If, are we, are if we just we throwing away more of your time and money right. to get the, the same result we've gotten with every other letter you've written? I, I would right. say that would be true if, if it wasn't new legal representation. We have new legal representation, and despite what happened this last meeting, we should give mm -hmm. them the benefit of the doubt and try to run mediation through them to see what, what they do. Um, that, that's my opinion. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else? Is there a time frame for that mediation? It was April 1st, uh, as I recall. Mm -hmm. So when you send a new letter, then will you send a new date saying with respect to Bob Hadley, that should be an April date and April time frame? Yeah. I'd and like so to see what your conversation was. I'd like to see how he receives your letter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and acknowledges it. And if he says, I need more time. Mm -hmm. And then, then we can be. and specifically how much time you need because this board has only so much tolerance to wait for something that we are, you know, that's in the IJ. Mm -hmm. It's in the IJ. We're Why following the rules. Mm -hmm. Can we just go to the arbitration? Well, we have, to, I mean, yes. We have to come, I mean, we could just set a mediation or arbitration um, so can you the, call the, I mean, the say informal dispute resolution. We could just follow the processes. It's just a matter of scheduling with them. We were actually at the point before Steve Zock retired or resigned suddenly. We were at the point where we actually had someone uh, mm. set. I'm just to, wondering if it's more meet, impactful. To do an initial meeting. More impactful and cheaper because you send a letter, they're just going to ignore it. Just call them up and say, we want to set a date for mediation, and here's when. Let's get it set. I mean, that's an option, too. It's I mean, that's just, gonna force it, it's, a, it's just a question of do you want to raise this issue in writing first of the who is your client? Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. I want that raised in writing first. I think that's a, we're just wasting time. Well, and then we've, we've got a meeting here in two weeks. Hmm? They're not wasting time? Uh, no, I, so, so we want to waste time because I they just, are? I would like, I would actually really like to hear that lawyer's stance on who it is that he is representing, Bill, because I'm not sure I know. And it would I think it would be beneficial before we enter into mediation with him to understand. Well, he can't enter into mediation as something he's not representing. So if he's not representing the commission, he couldn't enter in that conversation about mediation. That's what I think we're looking That's to clarify. Well, yeah. he would have to clarify that when she has to go to mediation. He'd have to mm -hmm. say, I can't go to mediation because I'm not representing the commission. And if he says, yeah, I can do that, then he's representing the commission, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why waste the time and spend the money for something that we'll get the answer to if we just say, let's go to mediation? Well, I think that letter is twofold. What I had asked was having the letter be twofold. One, who are you representing? And two, at what date will you be ready to commence mediation? And then if it comes back with a date that's not acceptable to us, then we counteract with a different date. Do we want to determine a date? I think what, what, what's I don't, the I don't. Uh, end result here? We want. We're, we're trying to get the attorney to bring to light to the commission, the leadership of the commission, the, the people on the commission that 
we want the, the lawyer to say, hey guys, uh, you need to get your crap together and figure out a budget. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, Oakland or Cambridge is not going to pay their second, you know, or their dues for the second quarter. That's, we want to sort of leverage the lawyer into making that argument for us because that seems to be the only person that Mr. Cook is listening to. And if he's only going to listen to the lawyer and he's not going to listen to his commission members, then we have to go down that road. You know, we strongly recommend that you have a meeting to get this budget approved. And, and after that, it's... Yeah, we've, we've searched every opportunity. We've given them every symbol, sing, single opportunity. All right. I do think that there are some questions here. So clarify that this attorney is indeed working for the commission and not an individual. Um, I, I think that... Uh, Chris brings up a good point. What we're trying to do is to, to, to get everybody on board to make the payment, and we still need to have their final budget number. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't just rely upon last year, even if it is last year, get the thing um, in front of us so that we can release the funds that we have. And, uh, Hopefully we can do all this within a couple of weeks and uh, we do not have unpaid employees of the fire and the EMS and we are also not in, a, in arrears with any payment on a vehicle. And to clarify, Tammy, we have the, mon the money earmarked already, correct? Yes. All right. Do you know what to do here, Jane? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, anything else on uh, fire and uh, EMS? All right, moving on. Correspondence. Uh, don't see anything. Future uh, questions, referrals to staff for future agenda items. Uh, Lisa, that's just on the committee assignments, correct? Yep. Organizational meeting is April 23rd, so I have sent the um, recommendations. So if you get back to me, what committees you'd like to serve on, I'll get those tomorrow. That will be on the next agenda. Um, Charles Feisel will be on the next agenda. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Uh, upcoming meetings, April 10th, Library Board. Uh, April 16th, Water and Sewer. April 23rd, uh, Village Board. May 13th, Plan Commission. May 14th, Joint Law Enforcement, as well as the Village Board. We are looking at setting up a public works meeting. Um, I will also need a licensing committee meeting um, with the new license coming up. Okay. We're always the second Tuesday, second, second and, and fourth, fourth Tuesday of the month. Okay, Not every so other. Yeah, some, sometimes we get an extra day we <laughs> got an extra week. <laughs> um, and um, Tammy just added May 7th is the next um, economic development committee okay. meeting. All right. Um, item 14, help, please, anybody? I'll make a motion to convene it to close session.